You got to make the right choices in life. When, some, when somebody <laughs> says drugs are cool, you say they're not cool. We are in a war most Americans don't even know exists. We are in a war with dogfighting. In a dogfight, one dog or the other is going to win. If they don't shoot the dog, some of these guys electrocute the dogs. The pit bull terrier was originally used for bull baiting. One or two dogs were released on a bull, torturing it until it finally died. This is one of the highest forms of entertainment during their era, to see a dog kill a bull. This became illegal in 1835. Since it was too difficult to conduct covert matches, that's when they started using dog against dog. Dog fighting favored the smaller dog, so the strong bulldogs were crossed with an athletic type terrier to become the bull interior. Since they were less known for their bull baiting skills and more known for their fighting skills in the pits, then they became the pit bull terrier. They were brought here from Ireland and England and became America's family dog. They became America's dog As the boundaries of the United States expanded, pit bulls were right there. The pit bull, at the turn of the 19th into the 20th century, was the number one dog of choice for the average American family. The pit bull was extremely intelligent, extremely malleable, and extremely devoted to its master. One of the phenomenal pieces about this dog in history is a medium-sized pit bull named Stubby. Stubby played a big role with the Connecticut National Guard in uh, World War I. In France, Stubby was like another soldier. And one night while sleeping in a trench, he snapped awake, gave a low growl and raced around the corner, and Stubby found a German spy that spy would have been able to go back to his unit and actually give away everything about this unit. He underwent several gas attacks and they adapted a mask. In a gas attack, he was able to wake up the unit. They were able to put on their mask and pretty much save the unit from potential death. If Stubby wasn't around, you may have 500 to 1,000 body bags. Stubby actually met three presidents. He met President Woodrow Wilson, Presidents Harding and Coolidge in ceremonies at the White House. He did receive the Purple Heart for wounds that he sustained during World War I. The General of the Army, John Pershing, awarded Stubby his highest honor, a gold medal. Following his death, there's a casing that was made of Stubby and is on display.
pit bull is, is really a smart animal that loves human beings. You only have to refer back to the TV show, The Little Rascals. That dog is a well-socialized, happy pit bull. You can see the children playing with them. That's how it should be. And remember to look inside the shoe for that famous picture. When I was a little boy, I'd grown up around Buster Brown commercials. That's my dog, Tig. I never before realized that that dog, Tig, was what today we call a pit bull. What have we done that could transform an, an animal from our friendly poster animal for a shoe commercial into a malicious, demonic animal that has to be eliminated? And if we could figure out how we did that to these animals, maybe there would be some lessons for how we do it to ourselves as human beings. This is a dog who will play ball with everything he has. And this is a breed that is fiercely loyal, very committed to whatever they're doing. And that may be a trait that a dog fighter might like. The American Pit Bull Terrier of today is a very different dog than it was 20 years ago. What has largely happened to this breed is what has happened to other breeds when they've gotten popular as the tough dog to have, and that is that you have people breeding them for the wrong reasons. You have people keeping them in conditions that we don't feel are acceptable. That breed has been used by the young generation. I would say the macho dog. Kind of giving it a bad name by causing it to fight other dogs. People have taken that instinct of a pit bull to bond to a human, to really love its owner, then they've totally manipulated it so that they're just using these dogs to engage in a fight with another dog. The underworld combined these elements realizing that they could train the pit bull terrier to become a vicious fighting creation. It is so far underground, it is so well entrenched, the American public has virtually no idea it's taking place. I don't see in any way how anybody can consider that sport entertainment, and certainly anything that remotely resembles something called professional Stop. fighters. They, they have no regards for these animals. Of all breeds right now, pit bull is probably the number one breed owned by irresponsible, uncaring, and abusive Some owners. Some of them will talk about how they love the breed. They don't love the breed. They love the money they think they're going to make from this thing, or the violence and blood that they get to see. The breeding of the dog is revolved around its fighting abilities with less attention given to appearance or confirmation. What I find in the pit bull terry is 90% of the time, the ones that have any aggression is normally animal aggression and not people aggression. Pit bulls by themselves are very sociable, loving animals. But when you take a dog like a pit bull and you feed it, you feed it hot peppers, gunpowder, you brutalize it, it's no wonder there are more attacks against human beings. Pit bulls probably have a bad reputation for several reasons. Breeding, bad breeding, bad publicity, being in the wrong owner's hands. Why blame the gun? Blame the gun owner. A gun won't do anything unless it's in the wrong person's hand and they squeeze the trigger. Government in D.C. taking all our money. Try to find a subsidy that isn't taken already. Days of playing fair are incredibly rare. It's a terrible state of affairs. Murder for the street.